It's Wednesday afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm John Harper, and welcome into Helping Seniors of Brevard. As we get the show underway, here's the Executive Director of Helping Seniors of Brevard and the host of our show, Carrie Fink. Hey, thank you, John Harper. It is a great Wednesday here on 90.3 FM WEJF. On behalf of Joe Steckler, our president and founder, and the entire Helping Seniors team, we are so excited uh, to be back for our every Wednesday gathering around the radio. So uh, this is the Helping Seniors radio program. It's designed to help us focus in on things that are good for seniors, uh, things that will help you as you make your own aging plan. And so uh, every Wednesday, we all get together on 90.3 FM WEJF radio and uh, feeding up and down all throughout the Space Coast and even points farther uh, north and south and uh, everything. So uh, also, we want to welcome our listeners who are joining us, by the way, there's a growing number of listeners who listen to us online, uh, literally not only here in Florida, but wherever they may be around the world. That's WEJF.net. And also a special hello to those who hear this uh, as a podcast later, because every time we finish up a radio show, uh, Jim Votro is kind enough to put that together, and then we put it out on the Helping Seniors uh, of Brevard.org website. And uh, we also uh, then feed it out on our YouTube channel and Facebook so people can take advantage of the information that's provided uh, each week on the radio show. Because what we find a lot of times is if we get into a particular topic, somebody says, well, that's really important. And um, they want they go, you know, my my uncle, my aunt could benefit from hearing that. And uh, so. Uh, it's really an important part of it to be able to have these programs on demand. So we do that with the radio shows. We do that with the TV shows. We do that with uh, all the articles that we publish, for example, in Senior Scene Magazine. And uh, it's really it's really a good, good thing to be able to have all that on demand. And our guest today, uh, we have actually two guests. We've got some fun stuff to talk about, but I'm excited to welcome both in the studio, none other than Barb McIntyre, of reverse mortgage funding and uh, how are you today barb i'm just great and glad to be here good and i think we're also going to have here in just a moment we're going to have dr lee sheldon with solid bite dental both of you guys have been uh, such a friend of the helping seniors uh radio network for uh just a long long time i know uh, uh dr sheldon goes back with joe from before uh when when uh, joe was running the brevard alzheimer's and um getting the Joe's clubs built. And in fact, we were talking that Joe was, uh, actually got onto TV through Dr. Sheldon's TV show at the time. And then of course, Barb, you've been helping us uh, for as long as I can remember. And we're now in our, our 10th year of helping of the helping seniors radio network. And so, um, but I guess before we really jump into the heart of the show, what we want to talk about is this is a great day for seniors. So we have a couple of things. Actually, before we get into the heart of the show, we're going to talk about uh, the car raffle that happened Saturday. That was so much fun. But the, kind of the breaking news for today, and I think this is so cool, and it's just about don't ever let the number of your age hold you down. Absolutely. Uh, William Shatner <laughs> has just launched into space on Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin rocket. So... Uh, this article, uh, I, in fact, I was seeing it just literally as I was heading out for the radio station. William Shatner, 90, made history on Wednesday on the Blue Origin New Shepard rocket as the oldest person to go into space. Now, you remember some years back, John Glenn went I, up on the space shuttle. I sure do. He was 77. But now, William Shatner, Captain Kirk <laughs> of the <laughs> USS Enterprise, is... Uh, is uh, now at 90, the oldest person to have gone into space. That and had to have been a lifelong dream of his, you know, all those years on Star Trek. You know, I, I am a space nerd anyway. Me I love all, all things space. It's one of the blessings of living here on the space coast. Mm -hmm. And so being able to go up to Kennedy Space Center and just tour all the history of everything that happened from here, launching to the moon, doing all the space shuttle, building the International Space Station, all that, plus all the great things that are happening here for tomorrow, all the SpaceX launches, all they're getting ready to go back to the moon from here. It's just exciting. But when you think about it, 
You know, I always laugh about how much we got out of the Star Trek series, right? Mm, because, yeah. you know, we had flip phones that looked an awful lot like their little <laughs> no. communicators, right? The, our iPads look everything like that little thing that Dr. Spock used to walk it, it's around It's like with. We, we were back then, we were watching everything that was going to happen now, you know, as we see it all happening. And and then you look at, you look at Captain James T. Kirk. There he is. <laughs> and there he is. He's now, you know, he was, he was circling the universe and chasing Klingon. <laughs> <laughs> and everything i know so exciting <laughs> and now he's been into space oh, and it proves at age 90 you can right. do anything so we talk a lot about joe steckler our president and founder joe is uh 80 is uh i think 87 going on 88 i got it wrong when i was out at the, the muscle car museum the <laughs> he first <corrected> time you. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he let me know don't 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 age me ahead so uh he is um he is uh uh uh, it's really an amazing thing. You know, I, I said, I made this comment when we were at the American Muscle Car Museum. You know, Joe doesn't have to do this. I right. mean, he, he certainly has a right with all the good that he has done throughout oh, his yeah. entire life. Uh, particularly, you know, with the with the Brevard Alzheimer's, getting those Joe's Clubs built, which in three locations around the county are such a blessing uh, to families today. And then, um, you know, 10 years ago, starting up the Helping Seniors Radio Network and uh, being able to... Um, just have uh, the helping seniors as an organization with starting the senior information helpline, the helpline, and yeah. and getting that, which now has helped over four thousand families. And so, ten years later, I mean, really, if you thought about it, there's no, there's no, uh, uh, there's no obligation. Yeah, for he's sure already on earned part. all the feathers he needs for those angel wings, and so. yet he keeps going. Because, <laughs> I know because he cares about seniors. He does, and he's passionate about making sure we're advocating for seniors exactly. at every corner. And I, so I think Joe is always an inspiration. Uh, as we talk about, uh, don't let a number hold you back. But I think uh, we got we have another one to add to that with Captain James T. Kirk, uh, <laughs> uh, actually William Shatner making history on behalf of seniors today yep. at age ninety. Who would have thought? That, I Mark? know that is great, and you know maybe one day Joe Steckler will go do that. <laughs> yeah, well, I have, it gives me hope. I have always wanted to go up in, up in space. No jokes about being up in space already, <laughs> but I really would love to launch on a rocket. But but you know now I think it's gonna. It could be possible in our lifetime. That's right. If, I know. If, if Captain James T. Kirk can go where no 90-year-old has gone before, <laughs> it, should, it, should be, it should be plausible for us. Absolutely. So we're going we're gonna to bring uh, – we have Dr. Lee Sheldon with us. We're going to bring him on the line in just a little bit because we have some things that we really do want to talk about uh, with him about the um, – uh, he's he's really been doing a study, or he's he's run across a study in Taiwan that shows a large population who had heart valve disease and periodontal disease had improved the heart outcomes once they got their periodontal disease treated. And so we're going to look forward to talking to um, to Dr. Lee Sheldon in just a few minutes. Now he wasn't able to be out there with us on Saturday, but but we do want to take a minute and talk about Saturday because. It was absolutely a fantastic night. It was our uh, fifth annual Helping Seniors Car Raffle, and we were so blessed to, A, have a record turnout. So, so there was tons of people there. I don't know if you saw any of the photos or videos on Facebook. There were so many people there. There was. There were some great photos of all the people. They were having such a great time. Yeah, it, was, it just looked like quite the event. I wasn't able to be there, but... Well, you did get to see it on the uh, on the Facebook Live. Broadcast. I was watching it on Facebook Live, and I was sure had my fingers and toes crossed they'd pull my name out <laughs> of that container. Well, you know, it was it was just a great night. First of yeah. all, uh, we just have to express our thanks to Mark Pylock, oh, yeah. who is the owner of the American Muscle Car Museum. He and his lovely wife Tatiana have opened the doors to their museum. It's their private, it's his private collection. I mean, he's amassed these cars. He has probably, I think, cornered the market. He's certainly the market's expert hmm. on American muscle cars. So he got all of that together. He builds this huge facility. And I remember every year, so Joe Steckler, our president and founder, and Ed Fleece, who's our treasurer, they went to see uh, Mark, actually, while he was building this, and said, you know, and they talked to him, and he said, no, I... I I would like to host you guys. You can do the car raffle here at my location. So every year that Mark has had the museum open, we've been able to do the Helping Seniors 
car raffle there. And every year it's gotten bigger and better. Now, of course, last year we weren't able to be physically on site because of COVID. Mm -hmm. But Mark generously said, he said, I want everybody who bought 2020 tickets to have an opportunity to come out here. So you remember, Barb, Mm -hmm. back in September we had a Sunday afternoon at the museum. And and everybody with their 2020 tickets could come out and enjoy the museum. And that was very nice. It was great. I was just amazed. And I also found out that it's, he's going to ultimately be building another building because his collection is continuing to grow. And so they have Lee, plans to actually make a larger building to house all the additional cars. So, wow. <laughs> yeah, it is re- it's really incredible. And that's actually the point I was going to bring up. Is I, so what we've watched over the years is the cars were spaced reasonably apart. And then as we would as we would go along, uh, each year the cars would get a little closer together, and then because <laughs> he kept getting up. more cars, and then he started going up. Right, he gets all these lifts because he's got to show he's got to put two cars in one parking space, like which is what I remember from living in New York City. Right uh, in the city is that they they would do all kinds of tricks like that to make the best of the space. Well, now his collection has grown. I think they were telling me it's three hundred and seventy five cars. Wow. It's it's just incredible. And so, Mark, not only this year did he kindly open up the museum, but he also got behind us and said, I will take care of the food this year. He said, I will donate the food. So generous. The the, the beer, the wine, the sodas. I will take care of this. I want to help helping seniors. And we are so grateful to not only to Mark, but his amazing staff there. Ed Dedick, who's the operations manager. Mm -hmm. Andrew Mackey, who's in charge of the events. They are the most professional uh, pleasant to work with bunch you could ever imagine but let me also say a very special thank you to the volunteers so when you're out there you know we see all these uh, folks in these uh, bright yellow american muscle car uh, golf shirts those right. are the volunteers and 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 everybody needs to understand these people are not paid they're coming out there volunteering their time to help with us to help us as helping seniors but to help the museum and make sure everybody has a wonderful experience such a great night at the museum the other person that we have to have to thank mm. is AJ Hires oh, with Boniface Hires Car Dealerships. <laughs> you know, he and Joe got on the idea of doing the car raffle together uh, back when Joe was trying to figure out how to get the funding to get those Joe's clubs built. And so they came up with a car raffle. And I think uh, AJ said that night something like 35 cars over the years that they raffled off together and worked on. And so this year, once again, um, AJ put up his, you know, it's the winner's choice. They get the 2021 Camaro, the 2021 um, Dodge Challenger, Mazda Miata Convertible, or Kia Sportage. And so he kindly puts those up on the line so and makes them available so we can go out to all these events and get publicity for the whole car raffle. And so he was there with his lovely wife, and they were, they were actually part of the ticket pulling process. And that was so fun. And then uh, we had a very special guest star, Elaine Larson, who is a two-time world champion, jet racing champion. I mean, it was like (laughs) very inspirational. And she Uh she actually uh, put her hand in there and pulled out the winning ticket. And the winning ticket belonged to a gentleman named David Odahowski. And David, so we were calling him that night. We just Mm -hmm. heard back from him on Monday. He said, I apologize. He said, I was so happy to get this news. He said, but... um, I was on vacation. That's why I wasn't there. I get get home and get this great news on the telephone. And so uh, we don't know yet which car he's going to choose. So stay tuned. We will, the minute we know it, you will know it because we'll post it all over Facebook. But he's going to be making a selection between Chevrolet Camaro, Dodge Challenger, Mazda Miata, or Kia Sportage. And uh, it's going to be fun to see what he wants to win. But more interesting, I thought, than the fact that we pulled him as the winner was what Joe was telling us the night of the grand drawing. Uh Because Joe says, when we read the name, Joe says, I know this gentleman. He said, this gentleman helped me years ago when I was trying to get the Alzheimer's going and helped me with organizing for some grants and things like that he said i am so appreciative of him and so i i always say see there's another lesson you do the right thing it's eventually going to pay back absolutely <laughs> and then mr hires up the car and said that the the winner could get the 2022 yeah you know that so <laughs> that so the, was so surprising so the blessings just never yeah. never stop with it so and so that so it was great and i want to give a very very special thank you to you if you bought tickets and helped support yeah. us 
because uh, it's like Joe said. He said somebody tonight's going to win a car. Everybody else is not. <laughs> which is which is kind of the how a car raffle does work, like it or not. But it definitely gives you a great feeling knowing that you're contributing to an organization like Helping Seniors because the the world of information that now senior bar senior people seniors in Brevard County have at their fingertips they make a phone call and they can get so much information get directed to who they need to talk to the sponsors such as myself you know provide services answer questions about specific products that we're specialists in and it's just you know a, a wonderful place to to get what you need to have access to answers for yeah, important questions we have uh, such an opportunity for 10 years now we've operated i that's what i said uh when we were talking with the crowd on saturday we said you know this is the fun part of what we get to do come out and oh, play yeah. with shiny fast <laughs> <laughs> new toy cars <laughs> it's like it, it's it's great fun but the work of helping seniors right. is quite serious and the calls that we get on that senior information uh helpline yeah first of all uh, sometimes they're simple. We love those. That's that's great. Here's a number. Have a nice day. Hope that hope that helped you. Mm-hmm. And and oftentimes that is the case. But many times we get into deeply, deeply, deeply uh, complicated cases. And, right. And and what we've heard over the years is when people call in, they call in. There's a specific request. Like I'm having trouble. I'm about to be evicted from my house. Mm-hmm. And so that would be an example of a kind of a call. That would quite often happen. Or uh, I was relying on so-and-so to get me to an appointment. Uh, They've now had some medical condition. I'm stuck. What do I do? Mm -hmm. Uh, We had somebody calling yesterday. They couldn't get out. They couldn't get milk. Their husband had just had a stroke, was in the hospital. There's no way for them to get over. These situations are very serious when you run up against them. And that's why uh, the comfort and the direction and the help that the Senior Information Helpline uh, has been able to make a difference for over 4,000 families mm-hmm. since Joe started this organization in 2000 and, and uh, 2011. So well, the work is must, critical. He, he must be, you know, so proud of that accomplishment. I know I'm proud to be uh, to be involved, be a sponsor, and uh, and I just see it all the time the the number of people that that it helps. So, you know, it's a wonderful organization. I'm thrilled that the car raffle went off so well this year. Yeah, and when you think about it, too, uh, you know, this 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 was important 10 years ago. It's mm-hmm. more important today. Because, sure. Because, number one, look at the number of people who are moving into Brevard County. So mm-hmm. we, we have a mass – I know you call it an exodus when people go from someplace. What do you call it when they mass come in a place, an inodus? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, but we have all these people who are moving to Florida. And right. think about it. As they come here – They assume that some of the things that happened in other states work the same way here, which may or may not be correct. They don't know who to call, who to trust, Mm -hmm. where to get a you know information uh, that's going to be of benefit to them. They don't know who's going to maybe potentially take advantage of them, right? And so they need to figure out who we're a trusted resource, and that's why the Helping Seniors organization, both with what we call inbound. Uh, help, which is people calling us, Mm -hmm. but also outbound, because you can't pick up a newspaper without seeing Joe's articles, without uh, picking up the senior scene and finding all the information that's in there uh, that we publish every month. You contribute a lot of articles about what you do, about how, uh, because Barb McIntyre, who is one of our guests today, we're going to be talking also with Dr. Lee Sheldon, uh, we saw it by dental as we go along today, but uh, this is Barb McIntyre. You can talk to me right now if you want, Karen. Oh, well, I'm glad. Hey, Dr. <laughs> Sheldon, how are you? I've been here the entire time. I just decided I'd be polite. Besides that, you and Barb are doing such a good job. What do you need me for? Oh, no. Oh, we no. We're looking forward to not talking a, to not you. Not at all. We were, we were bragging on you earlier in the show because we were explaining you were the guy who got Joe started in his television career. I heard. <laughs> and, and then we were talking about uh, how exciting it is that uh, Captain James T. Kirk, William Shatner, uh, just completed his space flight. Are you ready to go, Dr. Lee Sheldon? I'm ready right now. I, I, I am with but you. I've got a few years before I qualify. So what we need to do <laughs> is, the, okay, so here's, here's the plan. There's four of us here. We write a letter to Jeff Bezos and say, you know what you could do that would be like a great thing for helping seniors publicity? You send Carrie, Barb, Dr. Lee Sheldon, and Joe Steckler up in a capsule, and we'll be, <laughs> it'll be great. <laughs> 
I, I got to tell you, there have been a number of people who told me I had to go up in a capsule. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hear you. And then, of course, we had such a fun time at the American Muscle Car Museum, and we picked – we, we uh, I, well, <laughs> we got a great winner uh, when Joe was telling me the, the gentleman's background. And so we're so excited uh, to find out uh, – everybody keeps asking, which car is he going to take? Which car is he going to take? And then we're also excited because Mark Pollock has already given us the green light – uh, to go ahead and tell everybody that, hey, we're doing it again, 2022, October uh, 2022. We're going to be right back at the American Muscle Car Museum. So I guess Joe and AJ are going to figure out the, the cars. And I, I, would, I would be sure the Dodge Challenger and, and the uh, Chevy Camaro are going to be back because of this whole Team Dodge, Team Chevy thing. Yeah. But it was just a great night. It was just a uh-huh. great night. So, Dr. Lee Sheldon, how are you doing today, sir? I'm all right. It's good to hear both of you. Um Everything's, everything's going very, very well. I am finally getting used to being an employee, uh, which is kind of neat. Um, and uh, the research is becoming so exciting in my field. So, um, you know, we're going to talk about a couple of things here. I think one is going to be integrity, which <laughs> which is a running theme for, for when we talk. But, uh, you know, the excitement that's going on here with the relationship to periodontal disease and heart disease, it just keeps on coming. Yeah, and uh, I know you, I, I know you referenced that earlier in the show, and um, um, it's 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 just an exciting time to be a periodontist. I'm really excited for us to get into this on the second half of the show because it's so imp- it's so important. I remember you you have been talking about this for years when we've done helping seniors TV shows and uh, radio shows and different uh, articles along the way that you've contributed in and and everything points to that. And yet it's a topic that most of us, I guess, really weren't aware of. I know I wasn't aware of it until I heard you start talking about it. So I think it's going to be helpful. And then um, I. I was going to say the other thing is uh, talking with Barb McIntyre, um, you know, who's a reverse mortgage uh, expert. I said, well, how we tie all these things together as we go through the conversation is one of the very legitimate uses as we talk about reverse mortgages is, you know, if you're you can't let these health things slide. And so if there's things that you need to do, uh, maybe periodontally in your mouth. And, and, and things like that that we're going to get into. Uh, and may, maybe it's even that you choose, like, there was some cosmetic stuff you want to do uh, as you move along to, to, to just get gain a smile. I remember, Dr. Sheldon, you did a whole program about uh, the importance of a good smile. And, and I know when you do the lectures, there's like a whole testimony about people who it's improved their career paths, it's improved their uh, domestic situation, they, they, they found a, you know, they felt comfortable going back out and meeting people and things like that. But sometimes those things take money and the reverse mortgage is a good is, is can be a good tool to do that. So Barb McIntyre, I just wanted to uh, without we because we've done so many shows about this, but I want to make sure people do know how to get in touch with you and if there's any late breaking things that we should be thinking about. Well, if, they, they can get in touch with me very easily by giving me a call at 321-259-7880. 321-259-7880. Late breaking news is really just property values are still very high, interest rates still very low, and definitely one of the, the most common uses of this product is accessing money for health care needs. And certainly it's so interesting to understand and hear more about how something like dent, gum care, periodontal care, can actually affect your health of your heart. I can't wait to hear more about that. And so, you know, all the different needs that we have for having the best health possible as we age, that's another, a real good reason that people uh, might need to access funds from their biggest asset, which for most people is their home. Yeah, and we're about to go to the mid-show break, but I just wanted to, because we did a show, maybe it was last month, where we talked about that this is like, could be like the perfect time to check the reverse mortgage because property values seem to be at a peak, which yeah. is a benefit when you're trying to maximize the value of what's possible. Mm-hmm. And also the interest rates being low, you said, has a real positive effect 
on what the person is able to access. In That's the house. actually very true. And it's real easy just to find out what that benefit could be. Just call me, 321-259-7880. Okay, and we're going to come out on the other side of this break with important news from Dr. Lee Sheldon uh, on this study uh, about uh, what's going on, uh, the connection between periodontal disease and, uh, and your heart. The Helping Seniors Radio Show right here on 90.3 FM. WEJF, uh, and welcome back, uh, listeners, to the radio and to the online broadcast at WEJF.net, and also to those uh, who pick up the podcast uh, as we uh, make it available, uh, both on the Helping Seniors of Brevard.org, uh, the Facebook page, Helping Seniors of Brevard, and the YouTube channel, Helping Seniors of Brevard. Those are all great resources, by the way, because our guests um, today, Dr. Lee Sheldon with Solid Bite Dental, and uh, Barbara McIntyre with Reverse Mortgage Funding, uh, longtime friends of the Helping Seniors Organization. But there is some great material that you can find online about both topics um, that we're covering today uh, on there because uh, they've both done uh, multiple television shows, uh, multiple radio broadcasts, multiple articles. And uh, if you just go in and you search, like maybe your question is uh, about um, – you know, let's say it's about dental care. You could just type in the world dental and it'll pop up all these articles and things that might be appropriate for you. And we have experience. We get calls all the time on the Senior Information Helpline, which I'm going to share that number in just a moment. So grab a pencil for that. Um, we get calls all the time. Somebody will have, have found one of these uh, through a search uh, and then they'll say, hey, I, this is where I'm at right now. I, I need to get more information about that. So that free call is 321 473 Seven seven zero and Dr. Lee Sheldon, are you there? I am here, Gary. We were bragging on you during the commercial break because we were talking about the very fact that um, I remember early on uh, when I first met you. Uh, I think it was probably maybe even the first time we did television together with with Joe Steckler, and uh, you were helping him get the whole helping seniors organization thing going. And I remember you were, you you really brought to the forefront this whole thing that. Um, that your mouth is a whole lot more than just your teeth. It's actually kind of like some sort of gateway into your overall health. And when we start talking about this this study uh, that you referenced uh, about the uh, uh, large population over in Taiwan that they studied who had heart valve disease and periodontal disease, and everything got a lot better on heart outcomes when they took care of the periodontal disease. And I remember I was literally during the break was uh, telling Barb how – uh, you've helped Tammy and I through the uh, through the uh, process of trying to get where we do uh, the regular uh, maintenance, so that we are are trying to keep everything in in good shape in that di- direction. And Barb was saying she 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 really uh, is looking forward to hearing what we're going to talk about on this today too. I sure am. Very important well, stuff. It, it was interesting, Barb and Carrie. The you know, there have been a number of studies over the years that have looked at atherosclerotic heart disease, which essentially means the arteries are clogged. Um, it's the cholesterol type of thing. Mm-hmm. And the arteries are clogged, and people who have periodontal disease have more artery blockage, coronary artery block, blockage, than people who don't have periodontal disease. So we, we know that, and there, are, there is some evidence now of cause and effect in, in that regard that if you have periodontitis, it actually is a cause or one of the causes of heart disease. But we've never had a study, we've never looked at anything with regard to valve disease. And there are a number of people who have um, valve replacement surgeries done uh, over the years where the valves themselves um, um, calcify. So this study was done in Taiwan, and it's an observational study. And you don't... the ultimate in science is you design the study first, you have one group, and you have another group, you follow them for the rest of their lives, mm-hmm. you find out what occurs as a result of different habit patterns or different things that, uh, different, different things that might occur in that person's uh, life that might affect disease. And that was the old Framingham Heart Study where we got our original material from cholesterol. That, that's that kind of a study, which some of you may have heard of before. But this one looked at insurance codes. So essentially, they looked at the insurance codes of their database in Taiwan. 
And what they looked at were the people who had been diagnosed with periodontal disease and those who had not, and those who had been diagnosed with valvular disease and those who had not. And they looked at every other risk factor that you can think of. And it turned out that those people who didn't have periodontal disease had a 60% lower risk of having um, valvular heart disease. Wow. That's That's pretty good, just by observing if you have periodontitis or non-periodontitis. Now, in the United States, almost 50% of the population has periodontitis. Wow. Wow. So now the next thing they looked at was, again, by insurance codes, is whether they were treated for periodontal disease or not. Mm -hmm. and looked at valvular disease. And again, looked at every other risk factor so you can factor that out. And so they were able to find, again, a 60% difference between those who had periodontal disease treated and those who did not have periodontal disease treated. Wow. So we're not talking about a 10% or a 20% difference. We're talking about now an observational study of over 12,000 patients. Wow. Um, Well, the study was was larger than that, but it was over 12,000 patients who had valvular disease and saw the difference between treatment of periodontitis and non-treatment of periodontitis with a tremendous, tremendous difference. Well, I have to say, Dr. Sheldon, that's very encouraging for me to hear. I I started having periodontal issues when I was 30, which is pretty old, young to start with those kinds of problems. And so the good news is, since I did have that severe problem that young, I've really kind of learned over my lifetime about constant cleanings and going to the getting cleanings every three to four months and that my gums are actually more important than my teeth, really. And uh, so to hear that that high percentage, if they do take, if it's treated periodontal disease, that the odds, the statistics are on the side of not having <laughs> the valve issues makes me feel a little more comfortable. <laughs> At first, when we started this conversation, I'm like, oh, boy, <laughs> This doesn't sound so good. (laughs) What's interesting, Barb, is because heart disease is what most of us die from, or the majority of people who die of a disease, there are more people who die of heart disease than cancer. Mm -hmm. And so uh, heart disease is always studied and is looked at first. Mm -hmm. But what's happened over the years, once we saw the um, periodontal um, coronary artery disease or or cardiac disease um, risk, then we started, and they started, meeting the medical side, started looking at the other chronic diseases that people have, mm-hmm. like Alzheimer's, for example, mm-hmm. or liver disease, or pulmonary disease. So we look at every one of these chronic diseases, and sure enough, there's an association between periodontal disease and all of these diseases. It doesn't surprise so me at all. So the fact that you're getting it treated, mm-hmm. or the fa- or for those listeners who don't have periodontal disease, and by all means, have a good periodontal examination done. Make sure you're getting a periodontal examination done. It's one of the most important examinations you can have. Right. Um, a periodontal probing examination where the hygienist or the dentist or the periodontist is getting six is is measuring six different readings on each tooth. And what, they, what they're doing is with a probe, gently with a probe going down below the gum line, they take measurements. And if you have measurements of one, two, or three millimeters, you're pretty much in the safe zone. If you have more measurements, pocket depths of greater than three millimeters, four, five, six, seven, the deeper it is, the worse the periodontal disease is. Mm-hmm. And there is no such thing as saying, well, I have seven millimeter pockets and that's the way I am. <laughs> If somebody tells you that, they're giving you the wrong information. Wow. So make sure that you're getting that treated. A 7 millimeter pocket treated will easily become a 4 millimeter sulcus or a 3 millimeter sulcus. And you, 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 at least in our office, you don't have to, sur- you don't have to do surgery to get there. So it's, it, it's important that you follow your own health in every regard, and here's your key. Less than three, you're okay. More than three, you're not. Mm-hmm. Get, it, get it looked at, and preferably get it looked at by a periodontist. You know, as you're talking about this, one of the things that just keeps coming up for me over and over is the fact that 
You know, we often think about going to the dentist on a couple of different levels. I, you know, it could be I have a tooth pain or I want to get my smile better than it is right now. And so we think about it either maybe just getting out of pain or cosmetically. But I don't know that we talk often enough about the medical benefits of, 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 of what we're talking about today. Like you don't say, well, this, you know, as important as it would be to go to your doctor, for a checkup, it would be just that important to make sure that periodontally uh, we're in good shape. Because you say, "Well, my teeth feel fine; I'm okay." But but what you're talking about are things that we don't nec- we wouldn't we may not necessarily be aware that are problems for us. It's correct, and uh, sometimes the physicians aren't aware of it either, or the physician has a certain amount of time to spend with the patient. You know, with with all of the reimbursements the way they are, unfortunately doctors can't spend the amount of time with patients that even they would like to do. Right. And so there's a limited amount of time or, 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 or that, 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 that the physician will spend and therefore may not cover every issue. So it's important uh, um, to, you know, to when I, when I go for your, checkups, your dentist as well. When I go for checkups, my doctor looks through the file and he, you know, he kind of looks at all the different things based on my age and all that well did you did you have you gone and seen this doctor for that have you done this for that you know follow-ups for just because you do them annually or (laughs) or every two years and never once has a doctor asked me have you seen a periodontist and I it's so from what you're telling us in this study clearly periodontal disease can severely affect your health so I think that should just be one of those annual checkups see your periodontist it's interesting. I'm gonna next time I see my doctor, I'm gonna ask him about it. <laughs> Say, why didn't you tell <laughs> me the to doctor do the last time he or she saw, saw his or her parents? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'll do. Have you seen it, <laughs> Doctor F? Have you seen your periodontist this year? <laughs> but that actually, that actually so, speaks. So anyway, we 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 are actually strongly considering sending this article out to every cardiologist in the county. Yeah, it, it's yeah, so important because I was thinking, like, you know, we we have done radio shows right where we've talked about you know you flip on the tv you see all these come get a smile in a day kind of things and all that could be interesting i I think even uh dr sheldon did a tv show once which is which was called uh are too many teeth being extracted and you actually did one where dental implants are not always the best answer and so Mm -hmm. you really made some powerful arguments i thought about the value of mouth health Mm -hmm. and and yet the reality is when you see these uh they're always flashy and oh my life is so much better because i can smile better now and that's true but but it almost misses the more important benefit of what might happen health-wise if we actually took all this seriously that we're talking about it's absolutely true the uh, the 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 the, there are some, some some assumptions this was the original uh, topic of discussion today, Carrie, so I'll go into briefly. We don't have sure. very much time. But the, the original assumption was that um, because of the flashy TV commercials and the smile and all the things we, we, we talk about with, with, with dentistry, and smile is always number one, that sometimes we may miss or may ignore or for other reasons just don't, don't find the, the true problem and what, what can be done. And I went through uh, two patients, I think in the past two weeks, maybe three weeks, and the last one was literally crying in my chair Mm. when she had been told she needs all her teeth out. And I said, no, you don't. You can save your teeth. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that would be, that would definitely have, you know, if you're contemplating taking all your teeth out and then you hear that you don't really have to do that, I bet she did cry. Yeah, it's true, and 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 so I look at the commercials, and of course we do the same thing that they do in the commercials. You know, we take out the teeth and put the implants in, and put the teeth in one day. All, you know, all that stuff that you, that you hear. The biggest concern that I have, and that we have as a profession, is that, and we talked about it before, Karen, you mm-hmm. even mentioned it. There are just too many teeth being taken out. They mm-hmm. just are. There, mm-hmm. there is the assumption that periodontal disease can't be treated. I don't know where the assumption came from, but unfortunately, in our profession. The majority of dentists don't think that periodontal disease can be treated. Wow. It's not just a few. Right. It's the majority. And we're working hard, and as you know, I'm working hard to, to change that. We've got a group, a pretty, uh, I was very happy to be invited into this high-powered research group, and I'm just Lee Sheldon in Mel- Melbourne, Florida, <laughs> and the five of us are publishing papers together. Wow. And we're hoping to make an impact on the profession, not just the periodontal profession, on the dental profession to let them know, hey, 
start looking at periodontal disease, disease seriously. Just don't send it to your hygienist and say, well, that's the best that can be done, because it's not true. Right. You know, right. there's a reason that especially if periodontics exists, we can save teeth, and as we're referencing today, saving teeth may also mean uh, having a, a, a tremendous impact on your overall health. You know, I was thinking that you really, <laughs> we've talked about this on the radio before, you really kind of pioneered uh, the whole whole implant uh, uh, process going going way way back, and then I remember you created uh, because of the success that you had in the industry. You also created an organization that was helping other periodontists uh, uh, learn how to run what they do uh, at a higher level. But even in your own practice. Uh, where it's an interesting thing because you have your son. We've we've talked. We've not joked about. It, we've actually applauded him. He's one of the top forty. He was rated one of the top forty uh, dentists under forty in the entire U.S. Dr. Matt Sheldon. So you have Impressive. general dentistry, but you also have Dr. Michelle Furtado, who, like yourself, is periodontist. So you guys are really able to work on every level that needs to be considered, right? It is so neat. It's so neat. I mean, we developed. We we got everybody. Um, everybody there got everybody together. It was a thrill to work with my son for a couple of years before Michelle got here, and then Michelle and my son uh, Matthew were working together, and uh, now I'm working for them. (laughs) (laughs) I wondered what you meant about getting used to being an employee. I was was a little bit of a head-scratcher. Now I understand. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that was the employee part. I think that's great. Yeah. Let them worry about how they manage the office. You just do your job and go home. <laughs> Must be an Pretty interest- much every once in a while they ask me for advice, uh, which is nice. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Um- I, 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 it must be fun. So, so yeah. now, 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 Dad has to call son boss. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. But, but seriously though, I mean, it, the most of us just don't have this, and um, we just haven't been exposed to it, so we don't know this connection between mouth and health. Maybe the way we really need to. And I think that's one of the one of the things that's so great about you championing that, uh, even through the research association that you're creating. Um, with these other folks that you're working with, because you know most of us, you know, are interested in our health. We, you know, vitally interested in our health, and we want to do the best that we can. And so there's certain things like Barb was saying. You know, the the doctor says I want you to have this test done once a year, or this test done once every five years. But that connection through the mouth is so important from from everything, and it's being validated more and more. Uh, it sounds like almost day by day as as you continue to look at the research that's out there. It is, and I think the the best best thing for us now is that with shows like this and with press, that in fact patients become better informed as to what's really going on in their mouths. We want to we want to make sure the physicians are, are informed as well, mm-hmm. but we understand that we have success or lack of success in that area. Physicians. When they go through medical school, they don't learn, well, they may spend uh, a half a day on teeth. You know, they just don't learn (laughs) enough. And so there is an education effort that we need to make in order to be able to educate the public as well as educate the uh, the health profession. You know, I was I was going to almost go out on a limb here and ask ask this question. I said I, I would I would assume I don't know if this is true, but as a person trying to help the rest of us with our mouth health and things like that. You probably appreciate somebody who comes in who's at least tried to do some research and tried to understand this so that when you're speaking with them, there, there's a level of communication as to, you know, as opposed to like, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's true. It's a lot different now than it was uh, 20 or 30 years ago when we didn't have the Internet. Now, that has its pluses and minuses as well because, you know, anybody can publish anything on the Internet. So, true. Uh, so then sometimes we have to sort out the wheat from the chaff, but uh, the educated patient is a much better patient for, for us. Right. And I would think if, it, you know, as particularly as we, Joe has always talked about from day one, he's talked about the importance of creating an aging plan. And what he means by that is that we need uh, to think about all the things that are are likely to occur. I call it like a hurricane watch as opposed to a hurricane warning. We live here in Florida, so we get the difference. The, the watch means that it's possible this could happen, and so you want to make preparations. And the hurricane warning means, well, <laughs> you better have your preparations done because mm-hmm. it's hitting here. And, and I was thinking a little bit when I think about Joe's concept of the aging plan, 
what we're trying to do is we're trying to prepare for things that might befall us along the way so that nothing is just like a clear out of the blue shot. And it sure seems like if we make an appointment um, and really talk about our mouth health, that would be a great step in an aging plan. I would expect it would be. And we've been, when, when Joe and I first, I mean, Joe started it, but I, I was with him you know, right, right, right from the beginning. Sure. Of the seniors. Um, part of that, in fact, the whole thing was the aging plan. Mm-hmm. You know, if we plan, then then at least we know if there's a deviation from the plan. But if we don't plan and we just let things uh, attack us, then we become victims of not having a plan. Right. Um, right. And it doesn't take that much to write a plan. It doesn't, whether we're talking about legal, uh, whether we're talking about financial, whether we're talking about health. Yeah, you You can write that plan, but if you ignore it, um, understand that you can get away with a lot of things in your 30s and 40s that you can't get away with in your 60s, 70s, and 80s. Oh, that's so true. No, that's, that is, you're saying it 100% right. Now, and so with all this kind of like as a background, I wanted to ask you, Dr. Lee Sheldon, because you've helped the organization over the years in many ways, one of which is that you have created this uh, thing that actually helps us in the work. It's, it's good for the – I love it because it's win, win, win. It's good for the person uh, that comes in to see you. It's good for you guys because it, it is helpful in getting good care to somebody. But it's also a benefit back to helping seniors because I know when you bring in a new patient, you spend a lot of time – to make sure that you get everything that you need uh, out of that first visit, so you can make help them with a, a cor- with a correct with a correct plan of of, of here's what should happen if we want to go at this the right way, and yet you've made that actually. I know you guys invest hours with a with a new patient, and you do all these things, the CT scan, all that, but yet you've turned it into a way that can actually also benefit us as a charity because you allow the patients. Uh, first payment then if if they so direct uh, to come directly back to the charity and then they get a break because it doesn't cost what it actually costs you guys to do but you end up in effect uh, helping them make a contribution it's true a patient uh, brings a check for fifty dollars writes to the helping seniors of brevard county and they get the cat scan and the x-rays and the whole examination the whole two-hour experience at no charge wow and yet still help help the the nonprofit helping seniors. Yeah. That's it does. Pretty and awesome. I, it was something where <laughs> it was one of those things where I said, I've got an idea and now it's an idea that's taken off and we've got other dental offices around the country doing the same thing. Terrific. Which, is, which is a thrill for me. Yeah, it's a blessing for us, but but actually what I think it is is probably really is a blessing for the patient who calls you because what they're gonna get is they're gonna get a quality uh you, they're going to get a quality review and a quality discussion of all these things that we've been talking about this morning about where you stand on the, the this periodontal health scale and and uh, if if this potentially is it could could be something that y- you know would cause maybe health problems down the road in areas that go well beyond your mouth. I mean, I think it it really benefits us to know that. How do people get in touch if they say, "Hey, I heard you guys talking about this. Um, this is an interesting topic to me. How do I get in touch with you?" Just go, just call the office three two one two five nine eight thousand three two one two five nine eight thousand. Tell them you heard this heard about uh, this on Helping Seniors Radio, and Jennifer will take care of everything else. You know, and it's and what I have to explain, folks, is just like. Barbara is very, very generous with her time. You, you, you are really generous when people call in. They have probably 101 questions. You've probably heard 101 times at least about everything somebody might ask about a reverse mortgage. You really uh, do take a lot of uh, personal, um, I guess I would call professionalism and wanting to make sure you're giving them good quality answers uh, when people call you about reverse mortgages. But I think the same applies when Dr. Sheldon and his team are uh, willing to uh, really invest the time into a patient, they really don't get anything directly out of it, right, from that visit. It's just the $50 actually ends up being a donation to us. But it really could change the trajectory of somebody's mouth health. Absolutely. For- and, you know, that's – I am certain – and I get this very strong feeling that they do get something out of it just like I do. And that is a really good feeling about giving great information to someone who really needs to understand either how their periodontal health affects their overall health or with me, how 
their the mortgage might or might not fit into their financial plan. So, you know, I you're right, I spend a lot of time with no expectation of getting anything financially from it, but the the feeling of really doing a good job of informing and educating. So I'm sure Dr. Sheldon's he gets that out of it too. <laughs> and the end result is Bob's doing fine. I'm doing fine. Yep. People, you know, if you give people that kind of service, they're going to they're going to see you for treatment. Absolutely. No, I, absolutely. And for 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 Barbara's financial advantages, so they're just going to do it. Yep. Well, and it goes back to what you know, Joe Steckler. You guys both know Joe very well, and Joe Joe is uh, a really uh, he he stays on it. He wants people to one of the things that 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 is really. Uh, will charge him up worse than anything is hearing about a senior being taken advantage oh, of. Oh boy! <laughs> and 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 you know he's always an advocate that you've got to have good resources, people who know who are looking after your best interest and who have the experience to help you with that. And that really exemplifies uh, both of you guys. So before we close out, Barb McIntyre, one more time, if somebody wants to get in touch with Barbara McIntyre, reverse mortgage funding, and maybe just ask questions, you know, is this the right time for me to do this? What's the phone number? The phone number is 321-259-7880. And Dr. Lee Sheldon, before we close, real quickly, one more time to get in touch with uh, Solid Bite Dental, your dental offices. How do they do that? 321-259-8000. All right. And then we are uh, looking forward to seeing you back here next week for Helping Seniors Radio.